Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are calculating the percent of a number in two different ways. When you get the type of question that looks like this, this, or this, when you're asking for a percent of a number. Let's check it out. Method number one is to translate the sentence. This is where having a calculator definitely helps, and honestly, the calculator does most of the work in this case. If you're given a question like this, find 25% of 32, or what is 10% of whatever. When you're asked a question simply like that, I like to just translate it straight from this word phrase into a math sentence. So we'll translate the 25%, the of, and the 32. 25% written as a decimal is 0 0.25. Of means multiply, and 32 is 32. This gives us our math sentence. You plug that into a calculator, hit equals, and boom, you've got your answer. That's just about the easiest way to calculate the percent of a number. And the most difficult part of it is converting the percent into a decimal, and if you need a review on that, definitely check out um, the lessons in this channel because we have lots of lessons on converting from percent to decimal, at least a couple. All right, time for practice. I'm going to give you this question, what is 40% of 75? I want you to convert that, um, convert the percent into a decimal of into multiplying 75 as 75, plug it into a calculator, see what happens. Three, two, one, go. All right, we calculate or we convert like that, 0 0.4 or 0 0.40. Of means multiply, 75 means 75. When you plug that into a calculator, you get 30. So 40% of 75 is 30. Now, I want to write this out as a sentence. Because the original question was a sentence, what is 40% of 75? Let's say I want it's a word problem, and I want to write out my word answer. 40% of 75 is 30. Notice that each part of that is actually a conversion of the math sentence. 40% 40 of 75 is, is our equal sign and 30 is 30. So it's really a lot of translating between numbers and words. Fun fact. All right. It's not so much fun when it's math, right? But anyway, method number two, proportions. This is when you convert the percent question into a proportion. The way that you do this, and also on this in this method, having a calculator still helps quite a bit. This is the proportion that you would set up. Percent means over 100. So it's 10 over 100 is what? our unknown value over 470. So we're saying 10% or 10 out of 100 is something out of 470. And then we solve using cross multiplying. To do that, we multiply the numbers that are diagonal from each other and then divide by the remaining number. In a math sentence, it would look like this. 470 times 10 divided by 100. 470 times 10 is 4,700, divided by 100 is 47. If you want to change that into, or solve it using your calculator, you would say 0.1 times 470, and you'll find that it's the same exact answer. I want you to try practicing this method with proportions. Um, it's a little bit more of a challenging method, but remember that percent means over 100, so try converting this 20% of 445 into proportions and see if you can solve and then I'll show you how I solved it. Three, two, one, go. All right, there is the proportion. 20 over 100 equals our unknown value over 45. We solve using cross multiplying. In other words, it's 45 times 20 divided by 100. 45 times 20 is 900 divided by 100 gives us 9. So our final answer is that 20% of 45 is 9. Now you might be having a question right now, and that question might be, why learn the proportions method? The proportions method has a lot more steps and it seems a lot harder. Why do you even bring it up? 
if you like to simplify math, what the heck is going on? And the reason for it is that you can use proportions to solve all percent questions. All right? Proportions can be used in a lot of different ways that that other method just can't. So it's a good skill to have in your tool belt. It's a good skill to have moving forward. However, I would like to add, for the type of question that we looked at in this lesson, I usually use method one, almost always use method one. But knowing how to do proportions and seeing them and understanding them is definitely a good thing to know about. All right, that is all for today's lesson on two methods of solving per percent questions. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.